Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Pharma Explora. Join us today to explore the story of Typhoid Mary. Mary Mallon was a cook who carried a disease-causing bacteria called typhoid. She was a healthy carrier who never got sick herself, but she infected many people with typhoid, some of whom died in the early 20th century. Her story is an important one in the history of public health. This is her story and our lessons from it. Mary Mallon was born in Ireland in 1869 and moved to the United States in 1883 or 1884. In 1906, she was hired as a cook by Charles Henry Warren, a wealthy New York banker. Warren rented a house in Oyster Bay, Long Island for the summer. From August 27 to September 3, six of the 11 people in the house got typhoid fever. Typhoid fever is a serious disease that can cause death. At the time, it was mainly a problem for poor people in big cities and was still fatal in 10% of cases. The Warren family hired a sanitary engineer named George Sober to investigate the outbreak of typhoid fever in their home. He initially believed that freshwater clams were the cause of the outbreak, but he later realized that Mary Mallon, the cook, was a healthy carrier of the typhoid bacteria. This meant that she carried the bacteria but did not get sick, but could spread the disease to others. Sober tried to get samples of Mary's feces, urine, and blood, but she chased him away. He eventually learned that Mary had worked in eight other households before the Warrens, and that seven of those households had also experienced cases of typhoid. Twenty-two people had gotten sick, and some had died. He published the results of his investigation on June 15, 1907, in the Journal of the American Medical Association. About 3,000 people in New York City got typhoid fever in 1907, and Mary Mallon was probably the main reason for the outbreak. There was no vaccine for typhoid fever at the time, and antibiotics were not yet available. So the health department needed to stop Mary from spreading the disease. The health department sent Dr. Josephine Baker and the police to bring Mary in for testing. Mary did not want to cooperate, but the police eventually forced her to give samples. Her stool tested positive for typhoid bacteria, so she was quarantined at Riverside Hospital in North Brother Island. Riverside Hospital was founded in the 1850s to treat and isolate people with smallpox. Eventually, the hospital also treated people with other diseases that could be easily spread, such as typhoid and tuberculosis. During the polio epidemic in 1916, Riverside treated many patients. Mary sued the health department in 1909, but she lost her case. While she was in quarantine for two years, 120 out of 163 of her stool samples tested positive for typhoid bacteria. No one ever explained to Mary what it meant to be a carrier of typhoid bacteria. Instead, they offered to remove her gallbladder, but she refused. They also tried to treat her with hexamethylenamin, laxatives, urotropin, and brewer's yeast but none of the treatments worked. In 1910, a new health commissioner promised to release Mary and help her find a job as a domestic worker, but not as a cook. Mary was released, but she never intended to follow the agreement. She started working as a cook again, putting the public's health at risk once more. Mary had managed to get a job by using the fake name Mary Brown. Mary Mallon was a cook who worked at Sloan Maternity Hospital in Manhattan. She infected at least 25 people with typhoid fever in three months, including two doctors, two nurses, and one staff member. Two of the people she infected died. After the outbreak, she was nicknamed Typhoid Mary and became the subject of jokes, cartoons, and even medical dictionaries. She was quarantined on North Brother Island for the rest of her life. In 1932, Mary had a stroke and was paralyzed. She was taken care of at Riverside Hospital for the next six years. She died in 1938 and was buried in an unmarked grave in the Bronx in New York, United States. 
A post-mortem examination showed that Mary had typhoid bacteria in her gallstones. This raised the question of what would have happened if she had agreed to have her gallbladder removed, as doctors had suggested. Mary Mallon was the first known case of a healthy carrier of typhoid fever in the United States. She was proven responsible for the contamination of at least 122 people, including five who died. Mary Mallon, the infamous Typhoid Mary, was a cook who infected many people with typhoid fever without getting sick herself. She was quarantined for most of her life, even though she was not as responsible for spreading the disease as people thought. Mary's story is complex and tragic. She was both a victim and a perpetrator of disease. Her case reminds us that we need to be compassionate towards those who are sick, while also taking steps to protect the public. After Mary's death, New York health officials found many other healthy carriers of typhoid, but no one else was forced to be quarantined. Mary's story is a reminder that we need to balance the need to protect public health with the rights of individuals. Mary's story teaches us important lessons about public health, compassion, and rights. We need to protect the sick while also respecting their rights. We need to be mindful of the complex factors that contribute to the spread of disease. We need to find ways to balance public health with individual rights. Imagine a world where Mary Mallon was not forced to live in quarantine. Instead, she was given the support and resources she needed to manage her condition and prevent the spread of disease. She could have continued to work as a cook, but she would have taken precautions to protect her customers. She could have also become an advocate for public health, sharing her story to raise awareness about healthy carriers of disease. By learning from Mary's story, we can create a more compassionate society that protects both the sick and the healthy. Thanks for joining Pharma Explora today. Let's meet again with another interesting video.